Hello, everybody. Welcome, one and all. Today's the big day that we go over our E3 predictions. You have me here, Slade, along with Byron. What's up, Byron? Hey. And uh, at long last, we are finally here at this point. We didn't end up doing anything special like a uh, recorded, you know, we ask questions or anything like that due to time constraints. I do apologize for that. But uh, without further ado, let's get this underway. So, uh, Byron, you got any spicy hot takes before we get started? Uh, yeah, there's a very good possibility. You know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that is, all right, right it into it. It's possible. Now, I'm only saying because another prediction, really quick before we get back. No Mario Kart. There's not going to be another Mario. Mario Kart is not going to be. Mario Kart is continuing to sell like absolute gangbusters. Yeah. Uh, and so, no Mario Kart. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but there is a chance that there's possibly harm. But okay, this, is, so... this is like one of my most hail mary things. Okay, so let's talk about the ARM sequel a bit, because I actually didn't think of that myself when I was typing on my list. Um, an ARM sequel does make a lot of sense, especially coming off the release of Min Min and Smash last year. So it's like, it's it's on people's minds at the yeah. moment. Yeah. And while the first one wasn't crazy successful, I think it broke like 1.3 to 5 million sales or something. Mm-hmm. Um, it is something that if Nintendo wants to continue pushing new IP out there, it's yeah. definitely something that they could do. And I'm hoping that if they do that, there could be a lot of improvements on the original. Byron, what do you think of that? Uh, yeah, obviously it, it did not platoon the world, but it did, it did okay. That is my only hesitation for why I don't think there will be an ARM sequels because ARM probably didn't do as well as uh, anticipated. But I figured what else are the Mario Kart teams going to do? They're not, they, don't, they didn't work on Mario Kart. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe continues to be the best selling, it's going to be the best selling racing game uh, of any type of race. I and thought so, it already broke that threshold actually. Yeah. But I like it's possible, like I said, probably my one and only maybe Hail Mary for yeah, today. I don't think but... this is as Hail Mary as like, you're putting it, because like I said, it doesn't make sense for them to put Min Min in Smash if they weren't thinking about ARMS as like a whole. Yeah. Because at that point, they looked at ARMS, the original release, and like, oh, well, uh, nobody bought this, and fuck it, the series is dead now, and they just, like, fucking killed it and moved on. Why would they put a character in Smash, right? Well, so, could, I think you, an ARMS sequel makes a hell of a lot of sense. I'm actually kind of mad at myself for not thinking Well, about you it. could say the same but, thing uh, for quite a few other Smash characters. Like, oh, why are they in Smash? They haven't fucking done anything. <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of... Everyone is here is the major reason why everyone came back. I and mean, I think characters like Captain Falcon are more known for being in Smash at this point than fucking M-Zero. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, speaking of really quick, no F-Zero. That's all. Yeah, no I F-Zero. don't think we're in disagreement there. I think <laughs> F-Zero is a series that uh, we're not going to see pretty much ever, unfortunately. Yeah. I think that series is just going to dead. I think there would have to be some crazy renaissance of, like, old Nintendo IPs that are dead. Like, we've got, like, F Zero will come back when you see shit like Golden Sun and fucking <laughs> God, God, Balloon man. Fighter and all those see resurrections. Spoilers: none of those are happening. Sure. None of those are happening. Okay, so Arms Two. That's actually something that I didn't think of. So I guess while we're talking about you know smaller side sub series, uh, let's talk a little bit about Splatoon Three because they made the announcement. For that earlier this year, and it has a next year release date. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, correct? Yeah. 2022. Think, yeah. I think we could see a trailer for it with some gameplay. I don't think it's going to extend beyond two or three minutes. Honestly, 
we probably could actually not see it at all. You know, I was because about to... they could have their own specific direct for it. Like I think the uh, first two did. I, I was about to say I don't think we see Splatoon three yet. If we see it, I think we either see it September, October Nintendo Direct, or we don't see it again. Hey, it's coming out in like six. Oh yeah, I'm inclined to agree with you. I don't think if we do see it, we definitely don't see a whole lot of it. Yeah. But I think I'm inclined to agree with you that this is probably not the time for them to show it off. Like I said, I imagine Splatoon 3 will probably get its own separate direct. If I'm not mistaken, both Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2 got their own directs. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. so. That's my prediction for uh, the newer Nintendo IPs. I can't think of uh, anything else. Um, I know we're probably going to see like a small gameplay trailer of the new Games Builder Garage. Uh, I disagree. I disagree. We are not. Well, not. it comes out like what the day before E3 or the day of E3. It's a labo. It's one of those labo games. It's like it's separate. It's a casual, separate from the main. I can see us getting like a thirty second nah, reminder. No, la- like labo, lab, no labo game. kit. Got. It. Well, think about it. Like if like Nintendo does like we have games on Switch and they do like a thirty second montage of games currently out. I can see that. They do mm-hmm. montages I, I, all the time. I'm I'm pressing X to doubt. I'm pressing, <laughs> pressing X to, to, to doubt on that. Uh something I'm also pressing X to doubt on is Mother 3. Yeah. I, I, the only reason I am throwing this old test nut out there is because Harry Cruz a couple weeks ago on Twitter said localized mother. And well, back on started... people's minds once again. Oh, yeah. Well, it got back on people's mind when Reggie was teasing people on his Twitter that he's playing his own localized version of Mother 3 back at his house to troll people. Of course. And then Terry Crews, you know, kind of got in on it a little yeah. bit afterwards. But, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess it has to be said. No, Mother 3's not getting localized, people. Sorry. Yeah, but, Life sucks. But if you want to play Mother 3 localized, Rom hacking got that. There, there, <laughs> there is a probably a localization on. That. Well, what if there is some sort of crazy like they just release all the mother games in a pack? If, a if, if they do where. that, that would be absolutely shocking. And, and they, they, would they probably... also do this stupid shit where like it's a limited time. <gasps> oh, release. yeah, I was about to say they, they, they <laughs> can make it a limited time thing. Oh god, that would stick. <laughs> In people's cross so bad. That is that is the that is the ultimate monkey's paw situation. You get Mother Three finally, officially, but it's limited. Oh, people limited would be time so angry. <laughs> Just I'm like the, the Fire Emblem the situation. Chaotic evil today. <laughs> uh, monkey's paw. Okay, so speaking of uh, limited time releases this is a terrible tie-in but i feel like we're going to get some sort of title that's like a really old school title like uh gosh what's something that's not on like the nintendo switch online i think we could see like gba games or something but like they're released individually all as limited time releases well, well, speaking, well, speak, yeah, uh, it's possible. But speaking of NS, while we're on it, do you, okay, okay, I don't think we see it at E three in any way, shape, or form. If if there's anything, if they add like Game Boy or Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, the the dream of N sixty four, GameCube, it, that's gonna probably announce in a separate thing if it happens. Well, I think we can agree on, you know, and I said not really showing up. The main thing is we definitely won't see N64 or GameCube because Nintendo's kind of already shown their hand a bit. They would rather port those titles or make them part of collections, limited time otherwise, yeah. instead of making an N64 library. Because already the N64 library would be missing Super Mario 64 because yeah. there's no way they would put... 
Super Mario 64 on the Nintendo shop online when they just made a part of the Super Mario 3D All-Stars collection. Yeah, yeah. Also, hold on. Speaking of Mario, do you think we get an announcement about the fate of the game from 3D All-Stars? Or no? Um, I think there's a possibility. I don't know if it happens at this year's E3. I feel like that would be an individual Nintendo announcement because... My inkling is that they're going to release the game separately and make you spend like thirty dollars each for them. Yeah, that's going to be I, really I scummy. People are going to be see mad. See that happen for 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 sure on the thirty dollars. <laughs> yeah, up up sell you again. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they release it as part of the collection again because it already didn't make any sense for them to like make Super Mario 3D All Stars a limited time release. Unless this was always their goal of reselling those games at higher prices individually later. It just doesn't make any sense. Which Because that... if they did some shit like they put Super Mario 64 as part of the uh, Nintendo Switch Online for the 64 like shop or whatever, yeah, then people are going to be mad if they bought 3D All-Stars. Because why the hell did they buy if one of those titles was going to end up free anyway? Yeah. Yeah, fair, fair enough. So sure. I think we're heading towards individual releases. It, with E3 kind of being more of a, uh, I I guess I want to use the word hype cycle. Like this is where like they announce things to excite people. I don't think they drop the announcement of the games from 3D All Stars being sold individually here, because that would not be a uh, very hype thing to do. That'd be the opposite. It'd piss people off. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, that's my take on that. Now, for Nintendo Switch Online as a whole, I think there is a real possibility that we see upgrades to online functionality for previous games. Maybe not here at E3, but individually announced. For example, lately, we went over this on the channel, Super Mario Party got an online update so that you could play the boards online and whatnot. And I believe it's running off the new... Uh, internet that's not the Windows 98 shit yeah. Nintendo was running for the longest time. Yeah. I think there's a possibility we could see online functionality either added or improved on older titles. What do you think, Byron? It's it's possible, but I, I, I agree that we're not going to see it. Uh, speaking of things, we're not going to see it E3. You mentioned it already. Mario Part. I don't think we see a new Mario Party whether it's called like Mario Party 11 or Super Mario Party 2 or whatever it's called, I don't think we see a new Mario Party at E. I'm inclined to agree with you there because if we were getting a new Mario Party this year, they wouldn't have just done the update to Super Mario Party to add the online functionality. No, they no, would have no. just held it off until the new Mario Party. No, no, no. There, there is a theory that I have crafted, that I have put in uh -oh. my head that maybe. They're using this as a beta, you could say, like a, like a soft test for it for a future sequel. Whether that comes out at E three, not no. Yeah, um, I'm inclined to agree. I do think that this is something that they're planning to do. It's like the future of the series to add the online functionality and whatnot. We yeah. talked about this quite a bit in our other video. Yeah, but uh. Like you said, I don't think we see this here at this E3. I think the next Mario Party game is probably next year, even the year after. And I'm I'm gonna mention this really fun quick. This Mario, uh, besides the online stuff, uh, there was a new Waluigi render. But I am oh, cursing. I am cursing you all with this. And this <laughs> once again got people even more riled. Like, oh, why are they making like a new render for Waluigi? This isn't in his golf outfit so like what could this be for and some people thought it'd be for Mario Party it's very possible very possible but I don't I, I I don't think I think it's too early considering that ND Cube also made Clubhouse game and that came out a year ago or a little less than a year ago so I was actually doing a little bit of thinking on my, myself on what that render would be for and whatnot. And I came up with a solution idea. So 
This is going to tie into uh, my Mario predictions later, but I think we could see a sequel to a certain Mario spinoff that came out in 2017. I think we could see Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle 2 here at this E3. Oh! The first was wildly successful, and Nintendo has a pretty good relationship with Ubisoft, so making a sequel does make a lot of sense, especially because they didn't really use all of the Mario assets that they could have used in the original, you know, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Um, yeah. yeah. I think you could see characters like Waluigi and Wario. Maybe that's what the new render's from. Probably not. But I, what I strikes not... me as odd with the new render... Yeah, is, I did not I feel like even Nintendo themselves wouldn't need to make them, but maybe like Ubisoft or something. I did not writer. even consider Mario and Rabbit. I thought that's that's a one off. That never happened. See, even, even I'm though it not did do phenomenally well, even one-off. though it did do well. Yes, it did extremely well. I think it's so XCOM cool. is a series that's like pretty represented on Switch for the most part, and I feel like Mario is just such a good introduction for many people into that kind of games that Ubisoft would want to do more of those than... Like I said, Nintendo and Ubisoft had a pretty strong relationship for the first couple of years of the Switch's life cycle. Yeah. You had the Mario and Rabbids battle. You also had Starlink featuring the uh, Star Fox characters. Yeah. I feel like it's been a while since we've heard from that partnership, and a Mario and Rabbids sequel would be probably the easiest thing that they could do. They could come up with some new concept entirely. They could. They could. Also, you're going to make me do one of my lame transitions again. Oh, Speaking boy. Speaking of Star Link, we got Star Fox. It's been a while since we've seen a Star Fox game. I am still going to say Star Fox, I think after god-awful reception of Star Fox, rightfully, rightfully, I am. I think Star Fox is on a <laughs> for a while. If not straight up dead. <laughs> no, but it's like it's dead, but it's Well, I'll say this. I think the Star Fox characters happening in Starlink kind of helps the series, you know, stay afloat, say a lot of people paying attention to it. Well, I, I, th- I think just Miyamoto liked this series a lot. It's it's like Pikmin. Like that's why the series is still around, like... Pikmin's probably year. dead, like, low-key. Low <laughs> but, uh... But yeah. Back on the Star Fox conversation, I don't think we see a new Star Fox here at this E3. Last time, they made a, like, really big thing out of it. They had, like, the puppets and everything, which was super cool. Yeah, that was... That was, that was like, fantastic. Yeah. And then, um... It ended up being tied into Star Fox Zero, like, release, which... Spoilers, the game was terrible, didn't yeah. sell well. Bob. And I said, part of it's because it's a Wii U title, but most of it's because of the shitty controls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I don't see them dipping back into the Star Fox well anytime soon. Yeah. It's really unfortunate, but uh, I feel like we're more likely to see Fox and the other characters in other games far more likely than we'll see them in a game because of I think we might see them in like a year or two, but I don't think that times now. Yeah, I don't think like that's like this... where they catch up on a lot of titles that probably would have been announced or released last year. And I feel like Star yeah. Fox was not a part of that list. If it is though, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be shocked. I'll be pleasantly surprised. Because if you didn't uh... mention Starlink, I don't think I would have mentioned Star Fox God it today. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Um so, as I said, it's really unfortunate because uh, with Star Fox Zero kind of flopping like it did, like, uh, part of it, yes, it was a Wii U title. Now, Wii U titles saw a lot of success. Yeah. But I think even Nintendo sees that Star Fox Zero is just straight up not a successful game overall. Yeah. It doesn't have, like, the Pikmin 3 excuse going for it. Like, well, it wasn't on a successful console or whatever. They looked at it and they're like, no, this game's just straight up not good. Well, like the Pikmin, game was well, just poorly received. Well, Pikmin 3 hasn't done exactly well on Switch either. Well, I think that goes to show Nintendo that people are just not interested that much in Pikmin. But yeah. do they have to say it? 
Okay, yep. so on to the next announcement. We talked a lot about what we aren't going to see. Let's talk about something that would surprise a lot of people that I think we're going to see. That's technically third party, but not really. I think we will finally see a trailer for Bayonetta 3. I think it's finally time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. It, I think development should have gone should have going smoothly. Hope it doesn't end up like the uh, Metroid Prime 4 situation. And we'll get to that later, but... Yeah, so I don't think that Bayonetta 3 was in development hell or anything. I think it was just a steady development and possibly announced just a little bit too early. And, I and, think and, we're going to... Yeah, and, and yeah. obviously the pandemic. Yeah, everything. so um, I think we'll finally see a trailer for it. Yep. The question is whether or not that trailer comes with a release date or it's just quietly... You know, being quite development. Code. I I, think I don't think we see Bayonetta released this year. Oh, but I, I do think I we see a trailer at the C3. I disagree. Oh, I you think I, Bayonetta I, 3 is coming well, out this I year. Oh shit! This back at the beginning of the year during our prediction, you our did, 2021 that's right. predictions video. I'm sticking with it. I think Bayo 3 is the September game. Interesting. September of 2021. I don't know exactly what week. I can have a look at calendar here on on Windows. Uh, I'm just gonna fucking ballpark. Let's just go with the 7th. September 7th. Why not? Why not? Just throw, throw up random Friday. I think September I'm 7th. gonna stick with my initial prediction. I think I predicted Bayonetta 3 wouldn't come out until next year. I could be wrong. Maybe I did predict it would come out this year, and I'm just flip-flopping yeah. with my flippy flops. Pick but, uh, me. overall, I think now is the time to finally get more Bayonetta 3 news. Yeah, I would be gobsmacked if Bayonetta if 3 If we did it, then maybe there is a situation where they're kind of struggling with development, like the Metroid Prime 4 situation. But as I said, I sincerely doubt that. Platinum Games isn't the same studio as Retro, who didn't even get their hands on the product until like last year. Or the, or the year before. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, like, Long story they, short, Bayonetta three, you can expect it at this E three. I get yeah, it. Yeah, I it, I would be shocked if it wasn't at E three. Speaking of shocked if it wasn't at E three. Breath of the Wild two. Oh Breath yes. of the Wild two. Getting into this one early. So everybody knows with the uh, last Nintendo Direct. They basically came out and said, sorry, we don't have Breath of the Wild sequel here at this direct, but here is uh, Skyward Sword HD. Yeah. Uh, obviously, a lot of people were super salty about that. And uh, mm. there's a lot of speculation as to whether or not that Breath of the Wild 2 is in danger of not releasing this year or not. Because a lot of people are pretty much heavily expecting for the game to come out this year. Uh, spoilers, I think it's a possibility it doesn't, but uh, we won't get into that. But long story short, we do see another trailer here. Yeah. And I do think they post a release date, but that release date might not be this year, which is going to have a lot of people salty. I am going to, once again, dis disagree with you, and I think <laughs> it does release. I think it takes the Odyssey. Oh, okay. I that think it's sense. like Mid October for like your Pokemon, your Pokemon, uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I believe are the names of the Pokemon games this year. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, but yeah, I think Breath of the Wild two gets the Odyssey. Now, I could, I could definitely see it releasing in March, like first Breath of the Wild. That's very possible. And if if that happens, that would kind of fuck over Pokemon Legends Arceus. Yeah, because you can have two open world games directly competing with each other, and I don't think that's what Nintendo wants to do. So, in terms of the timetable, I'm inclined to agree with you. But at the same time, I feel like we would have seen some sort of trailer or news on Breath of the Wild 2 if that game was close to release. Well, that, that's, what, that's what E3 wrong. is for. That's what E3 is going to be for. I, I guess that's true. But uh, we do see it at this year's E3, and... Uh, I guess while we're on the subject of Zelda, um, 
we will not see any Zelda news outside of Breath of the Wild 2. Yeah. Especially concerning any ports of previous titles. If there were going to be other HD Zelda titles, I think they would have been announced already before, you know, Skyward Sword HD. So yeah. we're probably not going to see Wind Waker HD or uh, Twilight Princess HD. Yeah, what what a 35th anniversary. What an anniversary for Zelda. Yeah, because we're going to get Skyward Sword HD in July and yeah. then Breath of the Wild news at this year's E3, which possibly comes out this year. Yeah, and possibly. don't get me wrong, Skyward Sword HD and Breath of the Wild 2 would be still a really good year for Zelda overall. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But uh, I don't think we see any ports of the uh, previous HD remakes, remasters. Um, that does not mean we won't get anything else Zelda entirely. Oh. Because I think there is a large possibility we see another 2D Zelda game. Oh, you oh, you think we see it? Yes, yeah, so uh, Link's Awakening came out, I believe, two years ago now. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, 2019. Yeah, two weeks ago. And I think we could see not another port of or a remaster of an old Zelda game, but a new 2D Zelda entirely. I think we probably get a Link to the Past style Zelda game. I think that is a very real possibility, especially if my prediction for uh, Breath of the Wild not being out this year happens. I think in its place, we get a new 2D Zelda. What are your thoughts on that, Byron? I, you know what? I didn't, I, it's been so long since been a Zelda, like that blew out of my head. But I could see 2D Zelda in the, October time slot in the Odyssey time slot. That's what I was thinking it, when you it, brought yeah, up it, the it's idea. Very, of the it's time very slot possible overall. thinking about. It. Yeah, because it also like Breath time over fans. Yeah, if Breath of the Wild two yeah. is not this year. Yeah, it would be something like Skyward Sword HD, and whatever two D Zelda that they announce would be the thirty fifth anniversary Zelda stuff. I mean, the thing is, the reason why I don't see them doing another HD port of a previous Zelda game is because we just got Link's Awakening. And and we're gonna just get Skyward Sword, so... Yeah, so I can't imagine they do an HD port of, like, A Link to the Past or something. That would make zero sense, in my opinion. Especially considering that that means they would have ported the uh, sequel to A Link to the Past before doing A Link to the Past itself. That'd be so bizarre. So bizarre, and let's just complete the Trinity, the holy, the holy Nintendo game trilogy, Prime Four. Let's, let's complete, let's complete <laughs> the trilogy. We did Bayo Three, we did Breath of the Wild Two. Let's finish it off, Prime. No, not this. <laughs> no, it's not going to be an E Three. No, yeah, I don't think to, we get the uh... Prime trilogy. Oh, okay. Well, hold on, hold on. We'll we'll talk a little bit about that. So, uh, for Metroid Prime 4, because I guess we're going to transition to Metroid altogether. Yeah. Obviously, we're not going to see it. I think the game being in development hell is uh, pretty well known by everybody who follows video games, even slightly remotely. Um, I think they just got the entire team put together back in February this year. And I think they just now got their team, which tells me that this game is not at all for long. It's at minimum three years out still. Mm, I dis I disagree. I think they have the whole thing to bring in other hell. I am. I don't I, I obviously still don't think we see it this year. There is a chance we may see it. But that's a chance. I still think it's two years out, but as I said, I'm operating under the assumption that this game is in full development. Hell like the shit's you know, hit the fan. It's everything's gone, gone to crap. Like it's, it, it's, it's bad. No, it's it, bad. yeah, it's very possible because of COVID. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like they were already having the issues of like they had to get rid of the studio that was making the original. Yeah. Metroid Prime yeah. Four build, and they're like, yeah. fucking, we're bringing Retro on now. And then COVID happened after that. Long story short, I just don't think we see fucking Metroid Prime 4. Yeah, I agree. 
And uh, yeah. one, once again, no on a Prime trilogy. Okay, so we're actually going to disagree there. Because I do think that we do see the Metroid Prime trilogy. And there's a precedent for this now. So the reason why there's precedence for this is because they just announced Skyward Sword HD. So we know yeah. that motion cr- controls are a disqualifier for Wii ports of games. Yeah, I think it probably took them a little while to uh, figure out how they were going to uh, make Metroid Prime 3 work on the uh, Switch. Yeah. I think you have the gyro controls with the uh, Pro Controller as well as the Joy-Cons and whatnot. But they were probably trying to figure out, okay, were they going to just configure the uh, Metroid Prime 3 controls to what they were in Metroid Prime 1 and 2? To where you just use the right analog stick to kind of like look around and stuff like that. Um, That being said, the reason why I think now we're going to see the uh, Metroid Prime trilogy is because with Legend of Zelda um, Skyward Sword HD, there's now precedence for uh, Wii titles being ported. And it just makes sense that on the 35th anniversary of Metroid that isn't anywhere near as celebrated as Zelda, that we get something. And I feel like that something would probably most likely be the Metroid Prime Trilogy, primarily because we still have no idea what the fuck Retro was working on before the Metroid Prime 4 game. And we know they had to have been working on something. They can't... I yeah. don't believe in the reality that they did nothing but twiddle their thumbs for six years. I yeah. don't believe that. Like, may- maybe they... I think maybe they helped a little bit with, with the Tropical th- yeah, tropical 3's Switch port. Yeah. And honestly speaking, I guess while we're on the topic of... Uh, Retro Studios. Um, Metroid Prime Trilogy is the only is not the only thing I think Retro was working on before Metroid Prime 4. Okay. I think we will see a new Donkey Kong Country title. More importantly, Donkey Kong Country Returns. Oh. Yes, you... I think we see a new Donkey Kong title. Now, a lot of people are heavily speculating there might be a 3D Donkey Kong. I don't buy into that. I think... Donkey Kong 64 was very much a byproduct of Rare, and we won't see another 3D Donkey Kong game. But the reason why I think we get another Donkey Kong Country Returns title is because I think it's going to tie in to the recent popularity of King K. Rule from Smash. I think that now that Smash Ultimate's been out a couple of years and whatnot, King K. Rule was the most popularly requested character in the game. And most likely was the actual winner of the Smash ballot back then. We'll never know for sure, but... We'll never know for sure, but it's pretty much... He was topping nearly every fucking online poll you could see everywhere. Like, there's no way he didn't win, in my opinion. But regardless, we know that, you know, Donkey Kong is very popular right now, and so is King K. Roll himself. I think... Donkey Kong Country returns the third game. I'm not sure what the title is going to be, obviously, because that's for Nintendo to figure out. Yeah, I think this is King K. Rule's glorious return to the Donkey Kong series. The only reason I am hesitant is kind of like how quite for quite a few of these games I've been hesitant to say, "Oh, a sequel's coming," is because there's a game already on Switch that is sold. PC. Well, I, I am. Think- a- in terms of, you know, platforms, I think this is different than the Mario Kart situation because Donkey Kong Country Returns Tropical Freeze, um, I think it's in a different scenario or situation than Mario Kart 8 Deluxe because with that being a platformer, people who are buying that will move on to buy the new platformer. In this area. It's like if you play one, you want to play the other ones, right? Uh, I, 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 I guess. I guess that's true. Nintendo that think has operated been... though on like we're not bring. I there has yet to be, well except Zelda. Zelda's been the only, and and well, Splatoon. Nintendo are gonna make me look dumb for saying this, but I think with the exception of like Splatoon and Zelda, there has yet to be a sequel to a series that has a game on Switch to also have another. 
Well, the only reason I think Donkey Kong will break that trend is because Tropical Freeze is a port of the Wii U title. So I'm inclined to agree with you otherwise. I think if Tropical Freeze was like announced and released first on Switch or whatever, then yeah, I don't think we would see the next Donkey Kong game. But the fact that that game came out in like, what, 2016 or something? Uh, yeah, 2015. 2015? Yeah. And, uh, got ported to the Switch, I think it's high time we see another Donkey Kong well, game. And more importantly, as I said, this is going to write off the popularity of King K. Rule, who is 100% without a doubt, before Smash Ultimate came out, Nintendo's, at the time, most popular first-party character. In terms of, like, wanting the character in Smash, wanting to see the character in future things. Because yeah. going back into the Smash stuff on King K. Rule. A lot of people want characters like King K. Rool and Ridley and whatnot. Well, more King K. Rool in this sense. Because he hasn't appeared in a game in a long time. Like, the last game he appeared in before Smash Ultimate was like that Mario Strikers game. Or not Mario Strikers, the uh, baseball game. Yeah, Mario Super... Yeah. yeah, Mario Super Sluggers. And that was back in 2003. Yeah. So it would have been damn near a decade and a half since K. Rool had appeared in a game. And it seemed like the Donkey Kong Country Returns series pretty much moved on from the Kremlings altogether. Yeah. But a lot of people really, really wanted to see him come back. And yes, while it's awesome to see him in Smash Ultimate and whatnot, I think people want to see him in a Donkey Kong game again. My only other hesitancy is, of course, Prime. Like, I think a DK game may be locked behind the pos behind whenever Prime for See, I can be somewhat inclined to agree with you there. But mm. like I said, they had to have been working on something. And I guess this is going to make my prediction have some like nuance. Yeah. I think we are either A, getting the Metroid Prime trilogy, or B, getting a new Donkey Kong Country game. We are getting one or the other. What? Not. Nah, there is a timeline where we get neither. Yeah, well, obviously. But I'm just thinking like in terms of like the prediction I've made now. Yeah. I don't think we get both. But I do think we get one or the other. If if, uh, if, if I'm going with my prediction, like, yeah, this is the timeline we live in. Yeah. I don't believe in a timeline we get both because, obviously, Rare is working on Metroid Prime 4. Rare? You mean Retro. Retro, sorry. It's, <sighs> uh, yeah, yeah, we're R talking Rare, about Donkey Rare Kong. Be, we're, yeah. we're, we'll cover Rare. Yeah. Okay, so uh, back on to Metroid a little bit, since we're not yeah. getting Metroid Prime 4. One thing I do think we get that Retro will have zero things to do with is a 2D Metroid game. You think we get 2D map? Yeah, the only reason why I think we get a 2D Metroid game is because I think because of how they celebrated the last anniversary of Metroid, we got Samus Returns. And I think it makes a lot of sense for Nintendo to want to release something for the Metroid series this eh. year a lot of people do, do are they speculating know? they could do like a port or something but like here's the thing super metroid is already on the nintendo switch online as is the original metroid on the nes online yeah um it doesn't make sense for them to do anything with those games i don't see them doing with anything with metroid like zero mission or metroid fusion yeah or anything like yeah. that mm-hmm so that just leaves the idea that they might make a new 2D Metroid. And Metroidvania is kind of a popular genre of game right now. Yeah. At least within the indie sphere. Yeah. So because indie games are having a lot of success with Metroidvanias and whatnot, Nintendo could probably try to dip their hands back into that pie. Like, hey, look. We have a new Metroid game, is just like the old Metroidvanias, blah, 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 blah. People will love this. Yeah. Right? So I think that makes a lot of sense to do this year. I think I'm going to tie that into the reality. We're either getting a new 2D Metroid or the Metroid Prime trilogy. So let's say in this reality, we see the Donkey Kong Country Returns title. Yeah. Then we get the new 2D Metroid instead. Uh, I'm, and I'm this about, won't require Retro to work on it. So I'm a, so. I think the fate of two Metroid rests on how well Prime. I am, and you. I think the Metroid series rests on how Prime. 
Well, did it Samus Returns do fairly well? It did okay. But, like, it was a 3DS game in, like, the first year of the Yeah. So it, did, it... so it didn't do as well as it could have if it released, like, the year or two. That's fair, that's fair. But I, 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 I don't know. I just think we do see some Metroid content. I don't see them just straight up, like, we're not getting anything Metroid. I, I, period. Nintendo like, loves ignoring Metroid. So okay, I, yes, they have ignored so, Metroid for Zelda in the past. But even during the 30th anniversary, where we got Samus Returns, and Metroid got largely ignored, we still got something on Metroid. Yeah, yeah what Metroid fans will get is a tweet on the on Nintendo Twitter accounts, be like, hey, oh don't play God. Super Metroid. <laughs> <laughs> don't play Super Metroid on Nintendo's online. Byron, that's fucked. <laughs> hey, it's uh, possible. It's possible. It is, it is fair. <laughs> okay, you, Byron, what's your next prediction, buddy? Ah, uh, Kirby. We're getting mainline Kirby. I think it's about I'm to get mainline Kirby. I I am unsure. I feel like it's about time they do a three Kirby. Kirby fans have been asking for Kirby for a 3D Kirby since that uh canceled GameCube game from like E3 2004. But I I I think it's about time we get Kirby something, whether it's a mainline 2D or 3D game. I feel like we get a main line. Okay, I actually had some Kirby predictions too, so uh, I guess let's talk. Let's talk some Kirby. Yeah, let's. So, talk in Kirby terms Kirby. of a 3D Kirby, yeah. I'm not really quite sure. I guess I'm a bit of a pessimist. I feel like Kirby is kind of a character in a like series where 3D doesn't quite click or work the same way as it does for 2D. Probably because one Kirby's slow has multiple like. Jumps has like what seven jumps or something like that <laughs> in most of the games. <laughs> like he does, I just he does don't have see a lot of 3D platformer. Yeah, he, I just don't see a 3D platformer really working for the Kirby series, and I think that's a large reason why the GameCube Kirby got canceled. In fact, I think that build that they created ended up being the build for Kirby Air Ride. Yeah, I, I, I believe. So. uh... I do think you're right. I do think we see a mainline Kirby game because I think last year we got Kirby Fighters. Yeah, Kirby, Kirby Fighters 2. Oh, nobody bought it. Oh, yeah, no, and not the nobody, year before but... that, we got a 2D Kirby with, like, the robots and shit like that, right? That was on 3DS time ago. <laughs> oh my gosh, I haven't been following Kirby for... No, there was a new mainline Kirby game, like, two or three years ago on Switch. Well, yeah, Star Allies. Yeah. Star Allies, Star yeah, Allies. Star okay, Allies. thank you. Yeah. Star... Okay. Like you were talking about robot, and I'm like, what? Kind of yeah, robot I, like, I just vaguely remembered a robot or something. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, all right, guys, but, I'm clearly not huge on the Kirby I, series. I, like, sadly, <laughs> we're we're probably not getting Kirby too. Give it to us. But. Okay, like Nintendo, do it, you cowards. But uh, but uh, no, I think yeah. we could see something along the lines of a new 2D Kirby mainline game, yeah. like Star Allies. Yeah. I don't I know. Feel, if they feel I like feel like, like though they have to do something. Maybe they'll do something different in the until. No, well, I think it's about they kind of they had 3D overworld. I think it's about time they did 3D Kirby. If well, they did he, 2D Kirby, though, I'll be like, oh, cool. So here is my outlandish prediction that will absolutely not come true. Like All I right. said, my predictions might be a bit of a wish list more than anything else. So here is exactly why. Kirby Air Ride 2 makes a lot of sense oh. right now. Yes, that's right. I am predicting we see Kirby Air Ride 2. Yeah. It returns. Oh, boy. Okay, okay, okay. But real talk. Here is why it makes a lot of sense. Number one, they're not going to make another Mario Kart game on Switch. I think that is just fact at this point. Yeah. Mario Kart fun. 8 Deluxe has sold, like, 35 million copies, and it's still selling 2 million every freaking quarter. Yes. As long as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe sells 2 million copies every quarter, yeah. you're ne we're not seeing another Mario Kart game. That is just fact. Here is why I think something replacing it or working as like a different side title works. 
Because this is why I said uh, another F Zero title would work if they released it now. Like now would be the best time for something like F Zero. Mm-hmm. The reason why I think Kirby Air Ride Two could potentially happen is number one, they want to do something three D with Kirby. Yeah, like you said, and I think Kirby Air Ride Two makes the most sense for Kirby in the three D sphere. Simply mm-hmm. because a traditional Kirby platformer. I don't think works because of just how Kirby controls in general. Yeah. Like he's just kind of slow and he has like the bajillion jumps. Yeah. He has quite a few jumps, right? Yeah, he, he does have a lot. Of- so the 3D platforming wouldn't be terribly engaging. It'd kind of be like, and have a lot of the criticisms that like ukulele ended up having, in my opinion, where as I said, the platform just wasn't terribly engaging overall. So. Ignoring that, um, like I said, because Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has already sold its bajillion copies, it's still selling bajillion copies. Yeah. Um, Kirby Air Ride 2 would make sense as like a side standalone title with it because uh, not only are you getting that new 3D Kirby experience that people are asking for, but you're also kind of getting that racing game that's filling that void of a new title that... People want, because as I said, people have been playing Mario Kart 8 since, like, 2014. It's been damn near a fucking decade well, since well, the well, original like Mario Kart 8, 8 came out. Like, at most, like, 8 million people have been playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That's, that's still no small number of people. Yeah, like, most people have only been playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe since, like, 2017. Yeah, but, uh, going on to the, uh... Kirby Air Ride thing. I think it just makes a lot of sense for them to make a Kirby Air Ride right now. Yeah. Um, if I'm being realistic, I don't think it actually happens. But like, yeah. if, if I'm going like full optimistic, like I'm making like a prediction here, like I feel like now is the best time for that to make a return. Because they already know the original was pretty successful yeah. as well. And that people, there is demand for this game as well. It's kind of like how I was saying, I think I may have said it in a previous video, where mm-hmm. now is the best time for a new F-Zero game. I'm using the same train of thoughts and logic with Kirby Air Ring, too. So what are your thoughts on that, Byron? Uh, I meant... <laughs> it's just no. dead. No. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I have to say the same thing, honestly, with Kirby Air Ride, too. Like, it's not, it's not happening. I don't think Nintendo wants another. Yeah, I I could see that being the case simply because why would they not make another game that follows up on an already successful game that they made before? But then again, I've been proven wrong recently. I thought we would never see another Pokemon Snap game, and new Pokemon Snap just came out. So fair, fair, fair enough, I guess. You know what? <laughs> if if another Kirby error, if Kirby Air Ride Two comes out, you know what? Hey, prove me wrong. So uh, that's my prediction. I'm aware that there's a 99% chance, a 99.9% chance it's just straight up wrong. But I want to believe, Byron. I want to believe. Uh, speaking of something you can believe in, you can uh, believe to inform me on Fire Emblem. Okay. I don't have, honestly, I don't have a prediction on Fire Emblem, so fire, fire the fuck away. Okay, so talking about Fire Emblem and whatnot, so it has been a couple of years since uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses, right? Yeah. The game was really successful. It's the best-selling game in the series to date. In fact, I think it's outsold pretty much every Metroid game <laughs> as well, which is really funny <laughs> considering really we were just sad. talking about Metroid. If, but, if it uh, hasn't, it sold outsold most of the Metroid series. Not yes, yeah. So uh, Fire Emblem is kind of in a strange spot because. Now that the Fire Emblem games are on console, they're going to take longer to develop compared to being on handhelds like before, like with the 3DS and the DS and the GBA. Yeah. Um, The reason why I think we do see a Fire Emblem title at this E3 is because I don't think this is a new Fire Emblem. I think this is going to be a either a port or a uh, remaster of a previous Fire Emblem game. So we saw Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon as a limited time release, goddammit, Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, there, there it is again, that limited time release. Come out earlier 
last year and expired on March the same day as Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Fire Emblem is one of Nintendo's more successful series. I would argue it's probably fourth on the list behind Mario, Pokemon, Zelda, and uh, Animal Crossing. I think it's when you, you have like those tiers of franchises, Fire Emblem's like that second tier, but it's at the top of the second tier. Yeah. Um, actually, maybe not. Maybe I give Splatoon more credit than Fire Emblem. But mm-hmm. regardless, going back into the discussion on Fire Emblem, I think we could see another Fire Emblem Echoes game. Now, the question is, what Fire Emblem game are they going to remaster slash port? So there are two candidates because there's been interviews and articles back in the past. So the large consensus at Intelligent Systems is that they want to port and remaster Fire Emblem The Binding Blade, which is Fire Emblem 6. That's the Fire Emblem game where Roy is the main character of. Yeah, That game was also never localized here in the U.S. And the reason why a lot of people think that that could be the game that they uh, localize or pour, they remaster, is because Roy, despite his game never having came out in the West, is an extremely popular Fire Emblem character. And Smash is probably the largest reason for that. But you also have to consider he's also a very popular character in Fire Emblem Heroes. He's routinely at the top of many, many charts. Um, And it just makes a lot of sense that they would finally bring his game over here to Western audiences, as well as kind of celebrate the game overall as a whole. Because like I said, Roy's popularity is like pretty over the top. But there's another really popular Fire Emblem character in the West, but this is kind of a game that's already been localized in the West. Yeah. The other Fire Emblem game people think that they could port are the Tellius games, particularly Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn. And the reason why these make sense in terms of a uh, development standpoint is they are already console Fire Emblem games. So they would probably take a hell of a lot less effort to, you know, remaster and put on the Switch than a GBA title, because if they ported, you know, the Binding Blade or something, they would have to remake that shit from the ground up, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they would have to remake it. Well, there would have to be significant upscaling. Yeah, yeah. You know, things redone for the uh, GameCube and Wii title, the Tellius games. Mm -hmm. It would still be significantly less than building it from scratch, like Echoes. Yeah, and they already have games that they've uh, done in terms of GameCube Wii games. And Ike in terms of, you know, popularity is even more popular than Roy in the Fire Emblem series itself. And he's probably the most popular lord in the series overall. So remastering the Talius games also makes a lot of sense in that regard. I know there's, you know, minor speculation that we could see a remaster of uh, Genealogy of the Holy War, which is Fire Emblem 4. But uh, overall, I think that it makes a lot more sense that they port either Fire Emblem 6, the Binding Blade, or they do a package of Fire Emblem, Path of Radiance, and Radiant Dawn. Because the thing is, I don't think they only port Path of Radiance, or they only port Radiant Dawn. They would have to do it in a package, primarily because I think they ran on the same engine, primarily had the same graphics and stuff like that. And because it's a sequel, it's like a sequel or prequel, like they're literally tied at the hip to one another. It would just make sense to do both at once rather than one or the other. Now, there's a lot of speculation that they could do Fire Emblem 6 and Fire Emblem 7 because uh, the Binding Blade and Blazing Sword, Blazing Sword's actually a prequel to uh, the Binding Blade, where you have uh, Roy's father, Eliwood, as well as Hector and Lynn, really popular characters overall. And there's also the very first localized Fire Emblem game. So people speculated that they did Binding Blade. They could do it in a package with uh, Blazing Sword. But I think that's not as required as it is for, you know, Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn. So, my prediction for Fire Emblem, now that I've gotten all that, you know, you know, storytelling out of the way, 
yeah. is that yeah. we do see a Fire Emblem title at this year's E3, and I believe it'll be an Echoes title. Okay, okay. So, I don't have a Fire Emblem stick, but I do have an intelligence system prediction. Oh? Uh-huh. Because I don't think there's going to be a Fire Emblem, honestly. Oh. And there's not going to be a Mario part. WarioWare, babe. Getting a WarioWare. Oh, so Finally you think this is the return of WarioWare. Which, about time, and I think, because there's not going to be a Fire Emblem, uh, spot in there a nice little old uh, WarioWare right there. I guess that could be the uh, Mario spinoff that but we're like That Mario, could be where the Waluigi game. render is on. Yeah, but I mean, Mario series. Is, yeah. But yeah, I, I, it's about time. They're saying WarioWare Gold should have came with. I think Fire Emblem takes a little bit of a backseat. It's probably still in development, depending on what they do. And obviously, Intelligent Systems finished Paper Mario. So the third franchise, the third Nintendo series, they WarioWare. I think we get WarioWare. I think that's a real possibility, too, because uh, we know Intelligent Systems wasn't massively involved with uh, freaking Fire Emblem Three Houses because they had uh, Koei Tecmo do, you know, pretty much the majority of the work on that. Yeah. So at that point, we knew that they probably were working on the Origami King. That's where most of their focus was. But the thing is, Intelligent Systems is the type of company that never works on one project at once. They kind of have, like, multiple things in the oven at the same time. I don't know if developing on consoles thrown a wrench into that, but historically, Intelligent Systems has always had, like, a Fire Emblem game, a Paper Mario game, and a Wario game in the works at the same time. Yeah. So I think for Wario, it makes a lot of sense this year, considering that we just got out of the Mario 35th anniversary um, they released, uh, you know, Mario Golf's coming out. They just released Super Mario 3D also. So having a spinoff, and I understand Wario is not Mario. Yeah. But I and think th- having a WarioWare game makes a lot of sense. The only thing I'm hesitant to say that WarioWare is coming out this year is because they just added the online functionality for Super Mario Party. Uh, once again, two different franchises. I it, totally like, understand. War- WarioWare plays kind of different. Yeah, it's different. Mario. No, it's not just kind of different. It's straight up different. But is it different enough to kind of warrant the attention that gets to Mario Party and then, like, have a WarioWare game come out later that year? That's the yes. that's the distinction I'm trying to draw. I am all, if you yeah. believe they are different enough to do that, then I respect that. But under the basis of that is why I'm going to disagree that a Wario game happens this year. I do think a WarioWare game happens very soon, possibly even next year. Yeah, like but if, if it if it's not this it. year, for damn sure it better be next. Year. Yes, <laughs> I would be. I said, I'm inclined to agree. Like I said, I just don't think it's this year. So before we get to one final topic, Blade would not let me get away with doing this prediction video, out covering in some way, shape, form. Much we don't ordinarily cover rumors a lot on this show, if at all. The Nintendo. Yes, so uh, we have uh, a couple of rumors go. The Switch Pro is just the first of a few. Oh, um, oh. <laughs> The question is whether or not we are quote-unquote predicting the Switch Pro to be here at this E3. Well, yeah, that, um, no, that's exactly what The thing is, even though I believe it exists, and we already have seen 4K support data mined and the... Uh, Switch's latest data, data files and whatnot, I don't think they show off as Switch Pro here. I do not think now is the time that they do that. I could be wrong. They've also just recently denied the existence of a Switch Pro very recently, but companies do this for products they haven't announced pretty much all the time until they announce them. Like I think famously, Grant Kirkup a month before Banjo being announced at E3, was denying that Banjo was going to be in Smash, even though he knew the entire time that Banjo was going to be in Smash. The only reason that I do not believe that we are getting a Switch Pro at this very moment in time, or maybe for, for, a, for a while longer, is because of the current 
semiconductor shortages going on throughout the world. That is my only reason that I do not think we see a Switch Pro now or any time in the near future. See, I'm inclined to agree that we don't see a Switch Pro release this year or, like, announce. Yeah. But I do think that they can and probably will announce it, like, next year or something. But, like, until the short situation is picked out, they probably don't announce a release date. They just announce to the world, hey, this is a thing that's happening. Yep. Yeah, so uh, yeah. we're in agreement. We don't see the Nintendo Switch Pro here. But, but, but I had to bring know but I, that the Nintendo Switch Pro is in existence or like something along the lines that's happening simply because the uh, last firmware update from Nintendo Switch showed 4K support. So, yeah, uh, we know there is a thing going on with it. We just don't think it happens now yeah. Oh, yeah. or possibly even soon. Oh, mentioned this series earlier. I do no. We don't we don't see anything from Pokemon. We we've seen what Pokemon has up until January of next year. Yes. So I think we're we're all good on that. And then the big elephant in the room. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Spider Pass Volume Two. Okay, so before we get into that, I actually wanted to touch a little bit more on a separate individual rumor. And Smash will tie into this at the end, I promise. But uh, So, first and foremost, I want to talk a little bit about the relationship between Nintendo and Microsoft. Oh, Oh, fuck. Fucking Christ. I do not think you would be bringing up during this. I guess, (laughs) shoot your damn... As I said, because this is going to be at the Nintendo presentation. As I said, we're going to do a separate video for... Microsoft and as well yeah. as the other presentations. Yeah, Mi- Microsoft at all. Yeah, but the thing is, we need to talk about the Microsoft content that's going to appear at the Nintendo Direct because I do believe we are getting something from Microsoft. And uh, let me just say, this is probably going to be the most outlandish prediction I'm going to make. It's something that's been heavily rumored and speculated for the last three years overall. And uh, I'm just going to get it out there. I think now is the time that they show the Halo Master Chief Collection on Nintendo Switch. I think it's happening. I think it's something that they announced here. There were some rumors of speculation that Microsoft was going to do some sort of Games Pass on Nintendo. I don't think Nintendo will ever have a streaming service from another company on their platform. They've said so as much themselves multiple times over. So, what does Microsoft have left to put on the Nintendo Switch? They already got Cuphead on Switch. They already got both of the Ori games on Switch. Yeah. They've already supported, you know, the Switch in the past since, well, I guess it was more Bethesda than them, with both Doom and Doom Eternal. I, I, so would, con- I would consider that pre like, and, and, yeah, and, and then, of course, uh, as we see on screen, Minecraft. Yes, with, we also with, have with Minecraft. The They're putting characters in Smash left and right with Banjo and Steve. Yep. Like, Microsoft and Nintendo have a very strong relationship that normally two console competitors would not have. And I think because Microsoft is trying to release, you know, Halo Infinite, we don't know whether that's coming out this year or not. As I said, that game has some development issues. Yeah, that, yeah. But uh, overall, I think because they're wanting to advertise Halo Infinite, it makes a lot of sense for them to put the Halo Master Chief Collection on Switch. Also because they just finished porting it to uh, PC recently. I I, the game be done very well. That's, and I don't, I think this Microsoft and no partnership, I think after even Smash and Story 2, and, and the Cuphead DLC, that'll be another thing we talk about with, with Microsoft. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. I, for, I, th- I think that's it for Nintendo cross Microsoft. I definitely disagree. And here's the reason why I disagree. Um, it's not that it has to be Halo specifically. Microsoft and Nintendo has something else planned. We do know because they're still releasing videos together, they're still replying to each other's Twitters and shit. 
Well, but that, that's, that's, cor- that's corporate Twitter. That's corporate Twitter these days. Well, yeah, but you don't do that unless the companies are like planning something together or whatever. Like, ah. I just think that we see more Microsoft content on Switch. It's not going to be like anything major, like oh, Halo Infinite's coming to Switch or Gears. Fucking the new Gears game comes out on Switch. Like, I don't. I don't think we'll ever see that, but yeah. ports of older titles or whatever they have some of their smaller studios working on, I think there's a very real possibility we see those games on Switch just to advertise series and get people to buy Xboxes. Nintendo so think, would not let that happen. <laughs> well, here's where I disagree. I think Nintendo and Microsoft, and hell, even Sony to some extent, view the Nintendo Switch as a partner system. Like, people will buy a console and a Nintendo Switch. People don't just buy Nintendo Switches or just buy, like, you know, a Series X or a PS5. Wow, wow. Like, people usually operate on a two-console basis for the most part. The Nintendo platform and then whatever other platform. And I think because Microsoft doesn't view Nintendo... As I said, two console competitors do not collaborate and work as closely as Nintendo and Microsoft has worked in the previous, like, four years. That just does not happen, Byron. Byron, you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there. Okay, I'm sorry. Like I just keep going. myself back a little bit. Okay, <laughs> right. so because of that, um, I just, I see Halo as the largest possibility for the next, you know, Microsoft title that they, you know, move over to Switch. And obviously, they never did the new one. It makes sense for them to do the older Halo games. And this will tie in to uh, who I think the Smash character is. Well, well, so I will agree to disagree on the Microsoft part. Let's go, let's get to Smash. There, there, are, two, there are two characters left in what IMO is the final fighter. There are two spots. Do you think, Blade, we see both? characters revealed at E3? Or do you think one gets revealed now and one gets revealed in the fall? Okay, so this is actually a really tricky question slash prediction because historically, we have always gotten more than one character revealed at E3. I think, you know, with everyone is here back with the original release of the game press Ridley, I think that was probably the one time you could point to it and be like, okay, well, only one character got revealed. But well, no, that, literally well, that was every technically character like eight fucking characters. Yeah. But, uh, you know, previously at E3, you've seen shit like Mega Man and Wii Fit Trainer in Smash 4 were the and, first. Well, and, pa- and Pac Man. And Pac Man. Was Pac Man revealed at E3? I thought yeah, it was, it was later behind on. the closed doors, apparently. Like, uh, okay. quest only. So that was three reveals. I think yeah. a year after they showed off Roy from Fire Emblem returning along with Ryu from Street Fighter. Yes, I believe so. Which that was historically like leaked a uh, day before. Which was pretty sad because Nintendo themselves fucked up and put Roy and Ryu in the Smash update. Yeah. Instead of like hiding them. Mm-hmm. But long story short, that was that E3. Um Afterwards, we've seen Banjo and Hero revealed together at E3. I think this previous E3 would have been the E3. They would have only showed one character, which would have been Steve, right? Or possibly Min Min and then Steve. Yeah. So COVID kind of threw a wrench into a lot of people's plans. We don't know what they were planning on showing at last year's E3. It's just highly speculated that Steve was the big hype announcement that would have broke the internet because it literally broke the internet like months later. Well, it literally broke Twitter. Yeah, it broke Twitter. (laughs) But uh, I think overall there's a higher likelihood we only get one character than we get two. But thankfully, with these predictions, we've accounted for both. So we're going to make predictions. You more so than me because I I have a first-party prediction. But I do not have a third party because I'm like I I have given up. Yeah, as I said, third, it's I, impossible I, I, to predict. Character pass, character pack ten is is going to be a. I gear I that's the one thing I can guarantee you. It's going to be a third party. Yeah, as I said, I'm just looking at it. I'm like, there's yeah. no way to actually like predict this shit. Hell, I just went on a tangent about the you know Master Chief collection. 
even I don't believe that's like 100%. I don't even think that's likelier than not likely. I think that's like a 20% chance at best. Yeah. Uh, character Challenger Pack 11, I called it character. Uh, challenge, Challenger Pack 11, I think, is going to be the ring fit guy. That shout would out, be shout really out, wild. Shout-outs to the ring fit guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I That's feel, not like, I feel like it's gonna end with a first party character. I think it's gonna be split down the middle: three third party characters and three first party characters. Yeah, I can see that. Honestly, um, I think for E three specifically, though, like I said, we've discussed. There's two realities. They only show one, or they show both. So reality number one, they show one. My prediction, and I'm going to 100% be wrong on this, third-party characters are a fucking crapshoot, so y'all can't flame me too much for this. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm tying this in with the Master Chief Collection being in Smash. I think Microsoft has made a habit out of being the hype reveal at the E3 for the Smash reveal. And I think Master Chief is this year, year's crazy hype reveal. Mm-hmm. And would be the first first person shooter rep in all of Smash. That's who I think that's the likeliest reveal. Hell, uh, hell no. No, that, no, no, no. The only with. reason I don't think that is reality at it at all is because we have a block hole there, who's already owned by by a. Uh, okay, by okay, Byron, Byron, Byron. Here's my logic. Here's my logic. Last year's E3 would have been Steve. Yeah. Guaranteed. Do you agree? Guaranteed. Yeah. The year before that was Banjo. Do you agree that Microsoft has made a habit of being Nintendo's hypest reveals at E3 for Smash? Yeah. Yes. So that leads me to believe that there is a possibility we get two Microsoft characters. Nah. No, no, in this com- no company yet except Nintendo, because obviously this is their fucking game. So they uh, has gotten a character in both... Actually, no, sir. Fucking mind. I just don't think Microsoft is going to get two characters in the same damn pack. See, that's where I'm hesitant to predict Master Chief, because uh, you are putting two Microsoft characters in the same pass. Yeah. That would be some pretty blanted favoritism towards one company over, like, others. But then again, Nintendo and Microsoft have a very unique partnership that other companies really don't have. It's not like the kind of partnership where like these companies work really well together. It's kind of like a frenemies partnership. And I feel like Smash is where that partnership shines the brightest, comes to the forefront the most. So I I, I just have a sneaking suspicion we're going to see another Microsoft character and the only Microsoft character that makes sense for me to be in Smash is Master Chief. Because outside of that, you sure, you have Ori. And Ori would be the first, quote, indie character to make the Smash roster as a playable character. But Ori's already playable in uh, Rivals of Aether. Yeah. So Ori doesn't make a whole lot of sense, in my opinion. Yeah. So what else do you have outside of that? A Gears character? That's a little bit too mature for... Smash's um, liking, in my opinion, or Nintendo's liking. And this is why I don't think Doom Guy will happen for the same reason. Doom Guy was heavily speculated when he was a Bethesda character. Now he's both a Bethesda and a Microsoft character. Um, he has the most legacy with Nintendo. And Doom Eternal did just recently come out on Nintendo Switch. So I guess if I'm not going with Master Chief, then I'm going with Doom Guy. But like, I'm just not entirely sure Doom Guy rips the internet in two like master chief would and maybe this character doesn't have to rip the internet in two. maybe it's like a just a really you know exciting because doom guy would be extremely exciting to see in smash right yeah, it just it, wouldn't it, be it, up it, there with the likes of steve or sephiroth yeah it would be oh yeah so uh i'm gonna put my foot down master chiefs by prediction i'm already most likely wrong but I, it's something I'm obviously willing to live with. Third-party character is always a crapshoot. So if we only get one character, that's my prediction. And what if we get two? So now if we get two, and I think this is a different reality at this point, because they'll do what they did with uh, the hero banjo thing where they put one at the beginning, one towards the end, right? Yeah. 
I think we get two third party characters in that regard. Because first, I was leaning more along the lines of a first party character. Three for three, like you said, ring fit guy actually makes a lot of sense. And he has somebody that I did previously predict could potentially happen before. It kind of fits the whole we fit thing. But the only reason I'd be hesitant on the Reek Fit guy is because we got Min Min this pack. And I feel like they wouldn't kind of double down on the uh, hand to hand kind of fighter or whatnot. I guess Ring Fit guy wouldn't be hand to hand. Honestly, I'm not even sure how he would fight. They've doubled down on swords in this pack already. So, like. Yeah, but swords are like a different situation because they they get a lot more representation in general just because. A lot of RPG protagonists, as well as action character protagonists, are primarily sword wielders. Oh yeah, so that's why have another, have another fist. And we don't even know if he's swinging his fist. He might use the ring for all yeah. we know, or do like X. He might be. He's probably more similar to what we fit is than what any of the other characters would be. Yeah. But uh, my prediction would be Ryu Hayabusa from Ninja Gaiden. Primarily because they're remastering, remaking the uh, some of the Ninja Gaiden games on yeah. Switch. Yeah, the Ninja Gaiden uh, Master Clutch. Yes, so uh, he probably makes the most sense. I think he's actually even more likelier than Master Chief. But in terms of E3, I'm not sure Ryu Hayabusa is the big E3 reveal. Like yeah. Master Chief would be. Honestly, at this point, I'm kind of backloading on my prediction i'm gonna say either master chief or doom guy is the other prediction okay but uh overall i think ryu hayabusa is another character that's probably the most likely as a koei tecmo and nintendo has a really strong relationship they developed uh fire emblem three houses as well as fire emblem warriors yeah. they've made uh the zelda warriors games <laughs> as i said they have a very strong relationship it only makes sense that they get one of their characters in Smash. Those so, uh, some... yes, I think uh, Ryu Hayabusa is probably the least interesting out of all of them, but overall. And uh, before we go, I didn't realize we have one last thing to predict. So I guess we're, this is the best. Mario, uh-huh. Mario, Mario. Yes. Mario, Mario. Are we getting 2D? Or three at you go. Okay, so I am gonna be the pessimist on this one. I'm going to say, in terms of a mainline series Mario game, like a 2D or 3D, we do not get either, and it is just cold news. Okay, as in there's no news. I that's my prediction overall. As I said, we just got 3D All Stars as well as. The poor 3D world with Bowser's Fury. I think the another Mario game is going to need a little bit more time in the oven before we get another Mario game. Uh, Byron, another what are you thinking? 3D. Now, I'm going to say that's for 3D. I think we don't get we get like a vague 2022 date. I think maybe we. I I think I think it's about time. Now, now I might now I might be shooting myself in the ass on this considering NSMBU Deluxe is on Switch, but I think 2D Mario gets revealed, but not like really, really at at a. Hmm. I think that's a possibility because uh, you can look into the idea that uh, yeah, Super Mario Maker Two came out as the and SMBU Two. I think if they do another 2D Mario game, it'll be new Super Mario Bros. Switch. And that will probably be like the name of the title. I can't imagine it would be like a new Super Mario Bros. type title or something like that. I think it would be new Super Mario Bros. Switch. Um, Question is, what power-up or, I guess, gimmick, if you will, would they add to keep the 2D Mario fresh? Because like I said... Um, the Switch is saturated with 2D Mario titles. Yeah, Not a bad thing, it's a good thing. Yeah. But my question for you is, what do you think they would do with the new 2D Mario game? 
that that's like trying to figure out what new gimmick they're going to come up with for for the next Mario Kart. Like, good, good luck figuring that out, honestly. <laughs> okay, honestly. so you got nothing. There, you got there nothing. is a chance we, we could basically have the same thing except, oh, the new 3D Mario gets instead. See, but, that, but as I, I said, I'm just hesitant on a new Mario title overall. Simply because we just got a lot of Mario content this last year. That, that's that's true. And we're getting Mario Golf coming up. That might be their Mario thing for the year, outside of possibly a spinoff later this year. But who knows? I could be wrong. Maybe we do get the new 3D Mario title. I just don't I, see why they wouldn't announce that last year during the 35th anniversary and say, okay, it's a year or two out. Because pandemic. Uh, I guess that's fair. Yeah, that's very possible. But I do think some form of main Mario game gets announced, gets shown, but has like 20 or something like that. Has 2022 attached. So yeah, that's been... uh... Yeah. I think that wraps up our predictions. I don't really have anything else, Byron. Do you think uh, anything else will happen at this year's E3? Uh, huh? Ah. Terms of Nintendo, no. So, uh, but yeah, that's been our Nintendo E3 2021 prediction. Uh, yeah, we I think be... we could both agree that uh, this E3 is going to be pretty exciting overall. We're yeah. going to get pretty much content that we would have gotten last year, plus what we're getting this year, so it's going to be great. I don't think we're going to get quite double the amount of context. I'm sure some of it they sprinkled over the pandemic last year and whatnot, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, overall, we're very excited. We can't wait for 90% of our predictions to be wrong. <laughs> yep. But uh, that's going to be it for our podcast today. So this has been Slade. And this has been Byron. We will see you all for regular gaming and Microsoft at all. E3 2021 prediction. Hope you all have a good day, good night, and